Welcome to It's Your Business with Tracy Ellis. Today, I'm so excited to be joined by Charles D'Angelo. How are you doing today, Charles? Hey, Tracy. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here. It's our pleasure. Thank if you, you for don't, having me. You're welcome. If you do not know Charles D'Angelo, you should. He uh, just wrote a book called Think and Grow Thin, and he is a well-known local weight loss coach. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Helping lots of people. Very blessed and fortunate to have the opportunity to help people from National level politicians, Golden Globe winners, as well as stay at home moms, teenagers, people from all walks of life in reaching their goals and really improving their health, most importantly. Yeah, I could not believe once I started researching you and learning about you and talking to people, the number of people that you've helped that I didn't even know. Well, it's that's one really nice thing. But the more important thing, I think, is I've been where most of the people that come to me are at. In other words, I weighed 360 pounds by the time I was 17 years old. So when a person comes to me and they have all the reasons not to succeed, they don't have enough time, or they say that their family is filled with addiction and disease because of their habits. I understand. I came from a blue-collar family, a family plagued by morbid obesity. My father's family, of course, being Italian, my grandparents had no education as to the impact of their habits on their health. All of them had type 2 diabetes, hypertension, abnormal cholesterol levels. And what I'm here to say is that having come from that background, a family of modest means, and totally transformed my life, taking charge of my habits, losing 160 pounds in just two years, I'm here to say that it's definitely possible to change if you'll step up and take responsibility and make it a must for yourself. You really have to shift the standard of on yourself, the, the level of expectancy you have on yourself, and not buy into all the excuses that we can come up with as bright people, because there's always a reason not to. And for every reason that you have not to do something, I have the reason that you can do something. And not only did I lose the weight, but I've kept it off now over a decade. Yeah, I love that you say it's not just about food and exercise. It's also about how you think, which is critical. And I it's think about that's the most small important part. changes. I think that's the most important part. In my book, Think and Grow Thin, I talk about what I call the three-legged stool. Of course, healthy eating is just pivotal. If you don't have a healthy eating strategy, a smart eating strategy, it doesn't matter how much you want it. If you're not doing the right things, you're not going to get to where you want to be. The same goes for exercise. If you don't have a good really regimented exercise program in place where you're keeping yourself consistent and you're really disconnected from the idea of, well, I'll do it if I have time. If you don't have that in place, that doesn't work either. So you have to have that one leg of healthy eating in place, that second leg of the stool of exercise. But the third leg and what I believe is missing in every other approach out there and what really transformed my life was getting in charge of my mindset, changing my psychology, the think, right? I mean, because if it comes down to a one-on-one match between your bicep and your brain, your brain's going to win. If it comes down to a one-on-one match between your stomach and your mind, your mind's still going to win. So what we have to do is learn how to get our mind on the right page with our beliefs, with what we want for our lives. And oftentimes, we're not even aware of where we got the beliefs that we have. We're going through life living by a script that either our parents told us to live by when we were children or the people we grew up with, the environment. We come from a a family that didn't have a lot of expectations on themselves or they didn't really prioritize their health. So we think we have to live by that same standard. And we wake up one day at 30 years old or 35 years old or maybe 50 or 60 or 70 years old and we say, what the heck happened to me? My doctors told me I'm going to have to be on high blood pressure medication or now I'm on insulin because of my habits when in reality, if you'll change that script, if you'll change your mindset, which is what I teach people to do, you can totally transform your life. That is so true, Charles. I know uh, my husband and I were just talking about that this weekend. We said, you know, we've got to start working on our health. Life is flying by. You know, I'm a mother of four boys and Mm -hmm. one of my children has autism and Mm -hmm. I find myself with my work and my my home life and everything being so hectic we have no time for ourselves but like we were saying this weekend you know we have to be healthy and take care of ourselves because we have to be here for a long time to take care of these children here's how I look at it have you ever been in an airplane before I have have not never I will not fly (laughs) okay well for most people and I wasn't in an airplane until I was about 19 or 20 years old but one thing I learned right when I got in was they say if there's an emergency, they say, and the oxygen masks drop down, right. they say, the first thing you need to do is you put the oxygen mask on before doing anything else. You know, your first inclination may be, I have to put the oxygen on my kids, or I have to do this or that. But in reality, if you're not taking care of yourself, if the caretaker isn't taking care of him or herself, he's of no service to anybody else. You're right. So this myth that, well, I just don't have the time. One thing that we all have in common is the number of hours in the day. You have 24 hours. 
I have 24 hours. Tom has 24 hours. Everyone has 24 hours. What we do with that time is what makes the difference. How we prioritize, how we blueprint, what we set up as our goals. If we let life just happen, if we get out on the sailboat out on the ocean of life and we just hope that the winds of life get us to the shore we want to get to, we're not going to get there. You right. have to learn how to set your sails. We all know that the winds of life are going to be blowing. There are going to be unexpected things that come your way. You were born with a, a huge gift, a child that has a, a situation which is very challenging to deal with and could have been something that you could have said, why did this happen to me? Why me? I'm a good mom. I'm a good woman. You know, you, a person could go through that experience and let it destroy them. Another person like you could say to themselves, wow, what a gift. Right. This child's been put in my care. How much God must think of me to be able to care for this child and at the same time care for myself. I must have an immense amount of power in myself to be able to be given this gift. And you ask yourself, why would God give me this blessing rather than why this happened to me? The way we talk to ourselves, the questions we ask oftentimes determine what we'll do. So if you say, well, how am I going to lose 160 pounds in less than a year? You'll feel overwhelmed. Rather, ask yourself, how am I going to do what I need to do to get myself healthy and enjoy it at the same time? You see, you have to start to direct your mind. And unless you learn how to direct your mind, you find yourself in this what I call defeat whirlpool, where you try something for a few days, and then some stress comes at you, the wind of life blows on you the wrong way, and you get upset, and you use the very thing that caused the original problem, food, to change how you feel. Right. Rather than getting a little bit of space, you know, you came in the studio and you said, oh my gosh, I haven't stopped at all today. I've just been running, running, running. When you take 5, 10, 15 minutes, even 30 minutes, and just kind of look at your life and say, you know, where am I going? If I keep at this pace, if I don't start to be more conscious of the actions I'm taking every day, where am I going to get, where am I going to end up? And the best way to know is say, where have I ended up over the last two or three months? So if your health has been declining, if you're sitting in your car and you're saying that your doctor's just told you you're going to be on a new medication, you say, what do I need to do differently so that in three months from now, I'm not at a worse point because we all have control to a degree. I always say that if you want God to really work a miracle in your life, you've got to do what you can to the best of your ability. And one of my mentors, a gentleman by the name of Jim Rohn, that was one of his best quotes. He said, to work a miracle, do what you can the best way you can, and God will work the miracle. But when you don't do what you can, when you just hope, I mean, that's called naive. It's called being silly. You right. can't just get out there in the world and hope things are going to work out. You've got to take consistent action, action and you do understand that there is grace involved. But if you're doing all you can using a smart strategy with healthy food, with healthy exercise, and you get the mindset in place, you've got that three-legged stool then working in your favor, and it's just a matter of time before you realize how unbelievably different your life can be when you take responsibility. Gosh, I think I'm in a therapy session. That's so true, and I needed that. But it is, you know, I tell my son all the time, he's the best blessing for me, is the sweetest soul of anyone I know. And Charles's book was actually endorsed by President Bill Clinton, Angela Bassett, Tony Robbins. But I think the biggest endorsement of all, and I'm so honored that Tom Turbrock, my show producer, who's normally not on the show <laughs> because he's on Dave Glover's, actually, you were a client of Charles's. Yes, ma'am. And what he has said here is so true. And um, what he does, he saves lives. And he does it. He is doing God's work. And what he won't say, because he's such a humble young man, he's helped a lot of people out that couldn't afford the help. And he has helped them out, mainly children, and that's the kind of person he is. He's the real deal, and uh, I'm just uh, blessed to know him. Well, Tom, Tom's an example of exactly what I'm talking about. You know, working out, getting healthy, and getting in shape is a never-ending journey. I always say it's a journey without a finish line, and you have to understand that the goals you set are meant to expand you, not break you. Tom came to me over a decade ago. I think now yes, over a decade yeah, ago. I mean, yeah. hell, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Oh, you look okay, so young. I can't old. believe I'm that. Uh, he, <laughs> I he's thought you were like 25. <laughs> he's young, folks. He's wow. young. Yeah. I'm like, he's like my son's age, 23 or 24. No, I'm a little older than that. But nonetheless, I, when a person comes to me, what we have to do is we have to really get a grasp on the urgency of the situation. We have to come up with the reasons. I always say come up with the reasons first. And then the road will appear. In my book, Think and Grow Thin, you outlined to yourself, why do I have to do this? Not why should I, 
not why is this something that I might do, but rather why am I going to make this a must? Tom went from doing absolutely no exercise, being fearful like I once was of walking through the gym sure. doors. You know, if you're sitting in your car and you're ashamed. overweight. Ashamed. Ashamed. Exactly. Go in. The uncertainty that riddles you, making you feel that you can't walk through those doors because everyone in a gym environment is someone that's in shape and going to make fun of you. And Tom and I had a similar history. I was so bullied as a young man, I would eat my my lunch in a bathroom stall. Aww. I would totally withdraw. Once you start being made fun of and you're a highly sensitive person, and Tom, despite as funny as he might be on the Dave Glover show, Tom has a, a high degree of sensitivity. And things impact him as much as they impact me. And sometimes as men, you know, you put up that abrasive, coarse persona that I'm a warrior, I'm a guy. But underneath that, all of us have feminine energy as well. Some of us have more than others. And Tom, when he was a child like me, was easily hurt by the mean things and vindictive things kids would say. Bullied, so by, sure. the, by the time he was a grown man, that stuff just escalated. And if you're not careful, you start to believe that which people are telling you. Rather right. than getting clear that that's not about you, that's about them. When you make a judgment on somebody, you're not saying anything about them. You're saying something about yourself. And it took a long time for me to really get clear on that. And when I did that, I made the decision. I said, enough's enough. Tom came to me. He said, Charles, I, I have to make this a must. My diabetes is out of control. He made the decision he was going to start going to the gym five days a week. He never missed a day. He would totally transform the way he was eating and, most importantly, have the right mindset about it all. And in a very short time, he was able to really take control of his type 2 diabetes through my work. And it was really all about the mindset. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a therapist. I'm just a guy that has come up with a system, a strategy, a way of thinking, a way of behaving so that you can recondition the way you treat food and the way you treat exercise so those things become as basic to you as hygiene. So they're just what you do. They're not what you're using anymore. It's not a drug. And without the right psychology, you can listen to all the science you want. You can read all the fitness programs that you want to read or go to all the trainers and all that. But you know what? If you don't get your mindset in check, if you don't learn how to get your mind on the right side of things, it's going to be all for naught. Because the next thing you know, you'll have regained all that weight that you lost back and be right back to where you started. You have to learn how to master your psychology. And that's what I teach people to do, how to get their mindset in check. So, Charles, if somebody wants to contact you to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting to have you help them lose weight, how would they do that? Well, the first thing they could do is go to my website. It's www.charlesdangelo, that's C-H-A-R-L-E-S, D-A-N-G-E-L-O dot com. And go there and really look at the videos of people who have done it. One thing that helped me as a young man was looking around myself for other people that achieved the types of things that I wanted to achieve. And you mentioned President Bill Clinton. As a young man, he was a president when I was a young man, and he was a man that symbolized success to me. And having, you know, a few decades later, having him be on board with my work, his foundation doing so much to confront child obesity, was one of the biggest honors. And I looked to him and I said, wow, here's a man who comes from a, a modest background, and he's achieved so much. What were the things that he had to do? And what I do in my book and what I do in my work with people is give you an exact plan so that you don't have to be anxious or have this anxiety about what am I going to do, how am I going to do this. I will cut through all the ambiguity, giving you an exact plan to get to where you need to go. And you'll see the people on the website who have lost 100 pounds, 200 pounds, sometimes over 240 pounds, most importantly, totally correcting their health. That's what I'm here to say. God will work in your life when you step up. There is no disease. There is nothing that God can't touch in your life if you'll open your heart to him. Love, and I know this sounds so so uh, almost like I'm proselytizing. I'm not trying to convert anybody here. But what I'm here to say is that if you'll open your heart up to God and open your heart up to love and really start loving yourself and stop with the story, miracles will happen in your life. Things will change so radically and so fast. I'm a kid that came from a poor family. Neither of my parents graduated from high school or college. And I'm a man that now has had an impact on the millions of lives that people have been touched by my work. If I can do it, if I could go that far in such a short period of time, what's stopping you? It's not because of how great I am. It's because of my commitment to serving others. If you want to be ambitious, make the decision that you're going to do it serving others and serving yourself, making yourself the best you can be so you can be the best for others. I think you said that perfectly, and in life we all make choices, so I think that you are amazing, and I hope that everybody will go out and purchase Think and Grow Thin by Charles D'Angelo, or visit his website for more information. You can also go to the show website, or call me direct, and I'll be happy to give you Charles's information. We'll be back in a moment with It's Your Business with Tracy Ellis.